Hello folks, welcome back to Nature's Chemistry for National 5. In the last few videos we have looked at homologous series, we've looked at a brand new homologous series, the cycloalkanes, we've looked at some old definitions, we've looked at a new concept called isomers, uh, and in the last video we looked at how to name branched alkane molecules. Today I'd like to look at naming branched alkenes. And then you'll be glad to know we're done with this just now. So naming branched alkenes. A quick recap of how to name a branched alkane. You found the longest continuous chain of carbons. Fine, that was your basic skeleton. Second, you identified uh, the branch on that skeleton. You numbered the main skeleton from whichever end was nearest the branch. And then the size of the branch is just meth eth prop or whatever with YL on the end. So methyl ethyl propyl. So you'd have like, for example, 2 methyl pentane. Isn't it just the same for alkenes? Let's pick an alkene. If this was in class time, I'd ask somebody to pick me a number of carbons, but that's okay. Uh, let's go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. Then I'd ask the person where they would like to put the double bond. And I think we'll pop our double bond here for today. Now, instantly we run across a problem because if you have a look at that, that is going to be hexene, isn't it? Isn't it good enough to just say hexene? No, it's not, because this is also hexene. They are not the same molecule. They are isomers of each other. So the, the position of the double bond needs to be clear. And at the moment, just calling these hexene is not good enough. So I think what we should do is take a leaf out of the book of branched alkanes, and I think we should number the carbons in the skeleton here, starting with whichever end is closest to the double bond, because the double bond is crucial to their alkenes. The double bond's the daddy, basically. So we need to number whichever end is close. So this would be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in this molecule here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we need to improve on the name of just hexene. I think what we should do is we should call it hex for six carbons and then a dash. And then we should tell the reader where the double bond starts. In other words, which carbon does the double bond start at? So this one here is hex 2-ene. And this one here is hex 1-ene. And that instantly solves our problems on whereabouts is the double bond in that chain. Can you get hex 3-ene? Let's try and draw it then. If we keep the same carbon count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3. That means the double bond would have to start here on that carbon. Can you get hex 3-ene? Yes, you can. Trick question. Can you get hex 4-ene? Let's see if you can. Doesn't sound too difficult, surely, does it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Shouldn't that just be hex 14? No, because if you remember correctly, I said you're supposed to number from whichever end of the chain starts nearest the double bond. So this end is now nearer than this end. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, look, that's actually hex 2 in. That and that are the same molecule just flipped over by 180 degrees. Isn't that nasty? Right, now I started off this sheet as saying it was called naming branched alkenes, and I don't see a branch in sight yet, hey. So let's move on to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's pop the double bond here randomly, and let's pop a, an ethyl group on here. So, longest continuous chain of carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's okay. Both are the same. Not a problem. If we'd had a third carbon on here, remember, we need to grab hold of this and this and straighten it out. And this would become the main chain. But it's not a problem at the moment. 
So, um, when, ah, but I told you last time we're supposed to number nearest the branch, not when you're dealing with alkenes. Remember, this is the daddy, so this is in charge. So we do have to number nearest the double bond. This is less important than this. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is our branch here. This is an ethyl branch and it's on position five. So the full name of this molecule is five ethyl. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's hept. And then we show the position the double bond starts at, which is carbon two. And it's hept two in. Slight mouthful there. Five ethyl hept two in. Uh, I'm probably going to end the video there, just a short one, to show the idea of that today. So I have a very quick recap on what we did today, folks. We looked at the fact that you need to show where the double bond is hiding in the alkene molecule. And the way we did that is by numbering the longest continuous chain, but you start at whichever end is closest to the double bond. So what about branched alkenes then? Previously on branched alkenes, you could number either way around, whichever end was closest to the branch, but the branch is now less significant than this, because that's what makes alkenes alkenes. So we disregard the branch now, we find the double bond, and we number nearest the double bond, and then whichever carbon the branch is on, that's uh, the, the position of that particular branch. So 5-ethyl-hept-2-ene. I'll stop the video there, and I think I'll just set some examples for you guys to try. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.